Just call him. Where my bad bitch is at? <laughs> <laughs> we here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a get ready with me video. We're gonna get ready together. So get a drink, get some food because it's about to be a mukbang. <laughs> Just kidding. So today we're gonna be chatting. We're gonna be trying a few new things that are kind of new to my channel, new to me, things that I've been using you know, in the past few weeks that I kind of want to chat about, give you guys my feedback on. I swear you guys should buy them. And then we're also gonna listen to some podcasts. I just find that kind of thing so relaxing and so fun. Before we get into this video, do not forget to subscribe if you, you know, were really gripped by that lovely intro. My wig is trying to play me today. Like it's looking real funky. My skin is trying to play me today. So yeah, we're gonna be listening to the receipts podcast, by the way if you don't know oh! do you know there's certain songs that like by white people that <laughs> <shit up? laughs> so something i have been trying and something that's new is that i've been kind of trying to uh, use some new beauty i've been i've been trying <gasps> i've been trying to use some new beauty tools so i had a beauty blender for a while and only kind of uh, been using it for the past week and then i also bought wait wait, wait. i need to show you first uh, now I thought I wanted to try this out because it's so hard, especially when doing freelance work, to find like um, like bulk sponges. Like I don't want to go ahead and spend so much money on like beauty blenders, like the real, real beauty blender, to like take on makeup jobs because while I really like the beauty blender, I like the beauty blender brand, I just feel like there's so much more affordable brush uh, sponges that you can get on the market. And I thought that these blending eggs would do the trick, but I don't know. Let me tell you guys what I'm feeling. When wet, this one is much bigger. So if you have a big face, you, you'll you probably be able to put your foundation on a lot quicker as opposed to using something like this. However, where there are pros, there are cons. Where there are dogs, there are cats. Wherever there are, no. Where there are rats, there are cats. Whenever there are rats, there are dogs. How am I gonna say rats again? Where there are rats, there are cats. Whenever there are cats, there are dogs. Whenever you got, where they are there. Bitches are with Jana with they did it. With they did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did you got glitches. One major, 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 major con for me with this sponge. It's just like, look at that bounce back. Like, that just bounce. Look at the difference. Like, this is just so much. This is so dense. Immediately after getting this sponge out and wetting it, I thought, is this going to be a problem? To be honest, in the long run, it wasn't a problem, but I find that it does soak a lot of products out. Apart from this, though, I did only use it yesterday, so I've only been using it for one day. So I'll use it today so that you guys can see kind of what it looks like, what it performs like. I didn't notice too much of a major, major, major discrepancy in terms of performance between the two sponges so I guess that is one good thing one trick that I actually do and I learned this from makeup for WOC makeup for women of color she is on Twitter she's on Instagram I'm sure you guys have seen her Instagram she said that with her corrector she sets it so a lot of the time I still have like excess powder on my brush so what I'll just do before I go ahead and put my foundation on is I'll just set it and you can kind of see how that sits a bit more into the skin as opposed to like blending with your foundation and making it really orange. This is just like a tip that I've been doing for a little while now and wanted to share it with you guys. This is actually the NARS um, All Day, no this is the NARS Luminous whatever their new one is okay i just still don't really understand what this foundation claims to do it claims to be full coverage but it also claims to be lum luminous i'm getting the full coverage -ness, i'm getting the luminous i just not getting the matte and i don't think that it really makes your skin look nice at all so two or three weeks ago i was getting little bumps on my skin that kind of thing and i thought maybe that's why the foundation wasn't looking good but i also was trying at the same time the cosrx foundation and to be honest that made my skin look a lot nicer and then i'd go back to my staple foundations like my estee lauder uh, my l'oreal pro matte and they still make my skin look really good so i feel like i'm trying it one more time on camera because i feel like you guys will kind of give me the best feedback when it comes to this it is super orange right now but i don't know if this is my true color match i'm in the shade marquesas well that's the one that i'm trying hopefully it will look a bit nicer on camera to be honest every time i've worn it the color does look okay to be fair the thing is you guys can't see this but in my mirror i'm just not loving i'm just loving the way it looks oh. and this sponge now that i'm using it for the second time i'm really paying attention because when i used it yesterday i was in a rush to get to work so i wasn't really taking it in you really like my face is really taking a beating i'm serious brother i'm ugh. Sometimes when I trial stuff and it doesn't work for me, I would just take it like and not like even any horrendous product stuff I'm just like mm, I could pass or I have a lot or you know I, 
something else is my preference, I would just take it and put it in my makeup kit. But to be honest, I'm kind of hesitant on using a sponge like this type of my clients. I do not, like, I don't need that drama. I've also been using this Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Concealer. Now, at first, I was a little confused. Let me tell you what shade. I'm in 4N, guys. I really like the consistency of this concealer. Like, it just feels thick. It reminds me of the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer, which I really, really love. But um, I didn't actually repurchase when my last bottle ran out. Number one, because I was kind of deciding whether Too Faced was like permanently cancelled for me. And then number two, I just wanted to give new concealers a try. But now that I like this one so much, I'm definitely going to buy the Too Faced one again to just kind of give them a comparison. And whichever one I like the most, I get, you know, I guess I'll just keep. And I do like this, but I wear this concealer a lot to work. So um, it's kind of hard to kind of look at your face throughout the day all the time. So my final verdict is in, I, I don't like this sponge. I really don't like this sponge. I feel like I literally have to hold it so gently to like blend the concealer in. Otherwise, if I'm like really going in, I feel like I'm just kind of pounding my face, like too much. Guys, I have been enjoying this Morphe bronzer, Brontor. I've also been loving the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. I'm on a bronzer kick. I think the next one that I might try will be the Guerlain one because I feel like that's a product that I've seen people talk about for years and years and years. And I didn't know that it actually came in a shade available to me and I just always thought that it was too expensive. But for me, bronzing is, is a way of life at this point and I'm ready to invest because this is this is a lifestyle for me and it's so pigmented literally i tap into here and there's literally excess falling off like you literally need the littlest bit and it will cover your whole entire face my only gripe with this is the like the highlighting powder i do love like a forehead strobe i'm, I'm enjoying that it's a little too bronze for me like i don't know how i feel about having something so bronze on my forehead so what i actually do is i'll put a tiny bit of it on and then i'll just go in with my urban decay one as usual can you see like i want a subtle glow like i don't want anything crazy and i feel like having like a bronze streak in your forehead doesn't look subtle like it looks obvious like it looks like you've put highlight on your face whereas this looks like you've just got like a healthy sheen we're gonna use a lovely 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 highlighter this is the jackie aina and artist couture highlighter in lovage I recently bought it because it came to Beauty Bay. I have Le Bronze already and I feel like Le Bronze is a tad bit too dark. So I always thought, should I just get Le Peach and like mix the two, but bitch. Le Peach on its own is doing bits. Le bits. Even if you love yourself inside and out, how do you overcome knowing that people always think of you having everything but the face? I feel like beauty, confidence, that kind of thing, it's something that it seems quite easy, but in reality, it's one of those, the most expensive commodities and one of the hardest things to actually possess and one of the hardest kind of mindsets to have about yourself. Like, I feel like it's so... I feel like when you feel beautiful, when you feel confident, it's like the most powerful thing. And for me to think that there's women or men, anybody out there who does not feel like really super great about themselves when they wake up in the morning, it really hurts me. And I think, you know, I think we all need to be pillars of change. Like we all just need to start being nicer to each other. Like literally, if you don't have anything nice to say, do not say it. Like literally, sometimes there's so many things that come into my head and I'm just like, that's not nice. Don't say that. Like, do you get what I mean? It's just that easy. And I'm not saying that I'm right or justified in having those kind of thoughts, but it's human. And if you see something, you're a bit like, it's going to happen. But it's about just being sensitive to people's feelings. Like, I'm going to play devil's, devil's advocate here. I feel like with this whole thing that Kanye West is doing, I feel like that's kind of what he's trying to say. I think that he's trying to say, I have an opinion and you guys have an opinion, but we just need to respect that we all have opinions. We need to just love each other because we're all human and we're on this earth and we have to kind of be around each other. So why not just fill the world with love and not with hate? Like, if you're feeling good about yourself, mm. why are you then going to let people that literally have nothing to do with your life, that don't pay oh, the absolutely. bills, yeah, yeah. That, that don't make you smile, yeah. that are not doing anything, why are you letting them bother you or stress you? Especially with the generation that we live in now, I always say, like, I can't imagine even being 18, like, being a teenager in this generation because mm. it is so just completely be different to how it was when I was growing up. I'm going to be doing a bit of travelling this year. I'm due to be going to Malaga in Spain, which I actually go every year. I didn't go last year, but I went the year before and the year before that. I'm due to go to Malaga. From that, I'm going to go and meet my sister in Venice. Um, cause it's gonna be her birthday. She's gonna be 21, 21, having fun. For my birthday every year, I had like a, like a, a, 
like, how do I say this? I like, I named my years of my life. So I don't think there was one for 17. I think 18 was, I can't remember what 18 was. I think I was nice and 19 because my sisters used to always say that I'm not nice. You're not nice, you're rude. So I decided I was going to be nice and 19. For 20, I can't remember, tipsy 20. No, I'm joking, I don't drink. <laughs> tipsy 20. I wish. 21 was 21 having fun. I don't know about you, I'm feeling 22. And then 23, it's all about me. Oh my God, that's such a pile of shit. So last year, November, I actually left the job that I was at before, which is a job that I've been at for four years. It like, I'm not gonna say, oh, it was a hard decision. It wasn't a hard decision at all because I just felt like I was pouring in so much there. And to be honest, I don't feel like I was really getting much back. I took a break for about three months and then now um, I'm working somewhere else. I feel like I felt so helpless in that three months and like I felt so vulnerable, I would say. The one thing was I get to spend a lot of time with my family and that kind of thing and just kind of understand like you know them them better in those three months i really really just thought about kind of what was the next step and i've had this idea for about two or three years now and i'm just really excited to bring it into a fruition and i think with this job it's put me in a better position to where i can save money and that kind of thing and really make my dreams come true and i'm very fortunate to have people around me that are really supporting me and are really helping me to kind of link up with the right people to make you know this idea happen so 23 it's all about me bitch it's out there, I've put it into the universe and I just, you know, I'm believing in positive vibes. I, I won't be like, oh, you just get there, you don't care about people, but I think their voice is quieter mm. and your voice is, uh, is louder than that. So I think you need to train your inner voice to be louder than what people, what's bullshit mm. saying. Mm-hmm. So the same way that you train your inner voice to be louder than what fear is saying. Yeah. Do you know everyone, you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do that. Yeah, or yeah. What, if I, what, if, what if I'm across the road and someone hits me? Yeah. Yeah. But you're, you rationalise it because your your sensible brain overrides that by being louder. Yeah, so I yeah. think the way to get over what people saying to you or get over or care about what people say is let your voice be louder than what their criticisms are. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Train your voice to be louder than your fear. That is, that's incredible. That's a word if I ever... Totally! I love taking like little sound bites and moments. Like I'm a person, like I really like moments, which is why I'm so obsessed with fashion. I'm so obsessed with like looks. I'm so obsessed with things like drag race because I'm so obsessed with being like, today I'm giving you this look. I want to be this person. You know, I'm so obsessed with creating moments that you can just hold on to. I'm a very visual person, so I, I really like to see things. I always have those moments where I'm like with friends and I'm really happy and I just think, take a minute, stop and think about this moment and just kind of hold it and picture it in your brain. I can really put together like feelings and scents and sounds to different events in my life and then I'm just able to recall it better I have a, like a really 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 good memory to the point where at my first birthday party I can pretty much remember the first birthday party like it was in my house everything I can remember the dress I wore I had no hair <laughs> same as today yeah I think we need to actually check ourselves on who you're comparing our beauty to or what you're comparing your beauty standards to yeah. there are so many different examples of what's beautiful amen Guys, I literally do not spend more than 10 minutes on you uh, on Instagram at one given time. I'm very much on YouTube all the time, Twitter, because I think it's hilarious. I like to be around positivity. I don't like to surround myself with anything that I feel is going to make me look bad. And I feel like sometimes you can look at Instagram and be in such envy of people's lives. Just remember, comparison is the thief of joy at the end of the day. That's something I had to learn big time even when it comes to things like youtube like looking at my numbers and other people's numbers and being like you know sometimes it's so hard to not be like i'm better than that person and to think that i'm not better than anyone none of us are better than anyone so who am i to say that that person shouldn't be in that position because i don't know your struggle i don't know your story take a lesson from me i did not spend more than half an hour on instagram a day i'm getting better now because i'm trying to use instagram stories a lot more because i'm not using snapchat at all so if you guys have added me on snapchat i'm so sorry but i just i don't know in the foreseeable future if i will be using snapchat i just think oh it's jarring man like and i don't want to see anyone that i don't care about that's the thing snapchat was putting so many people on the explore page that i didn't care about and i only want to send out good vibes to people like i don't want to be there and be like oh i can't stand her blah blah, blah. it's a waste of time like do you get, it's a waste of time you only have so many hours in a day and like, i don't want to spend those hours in a day envying people or putting out bad energy or you know like thinking negative thoughts about people and wishing people bad like guys i'm writing a book let's like i'm not writing a book 
But if I wrote a book, I think I should write a book. Look at me. I'm giving you real life advice. Oh, I'm giving you a mint green eye. Look at me. Monika's changed. See, I feel like the problem is everybody wants to grow up so soon. And I feel like because of this social media generation, everybody wants to look grown up. Everyone wants to look like they have everything figured out so it can look good on the internet. What good is a good Instagram feed if your life is in tatters? Like, what does it matter? You need to feed your soul. And whatever you feed your soul with, it needs to be something that's going to sustain you at the end of the day. Trust me, I'm 23 and I'm not in a rush to grow up at all. Like, baby girl forever. Forever. I feel like all your life you wait to be in your 20s and then you get there and you're just like, okay, this is what, like, this is what I cried for. There's two tattoos that I really want to get. I want to get a tattoo that says 23, which is so kind of hilarious to me because I remember when Zayn Malik got a tattoo that was like 25 or whatever I was like are you gonna forget how old you are but I just feel like at 23 I think I've really found my calling and I've really found my purpose and not to say that that won't change but I feel like in all of my life I've never felt the way that I feel right now in terms of pursuing my career and being so confident in what I'm trying to do you know to help other women and other men my mum is like if you get a tattoo like get out of this house she's literally like if you get a tattoo stay in that tattoo shop bring your clothes there she's literally in the room next door and I know that when you just say tattoo it just brings her out in hives like I can just feel it now she's probably gonna scream at me any moment now but I also want to get another tattoo um that says Vienna and my sister's like you've never even been to Vienna but it's Vienna by Billy Joel if you have not heard of the song please look it up it's one of the most beautiful like but haunting and just like so relevant songs it's basically a song about taking your time like it's just about living in the moment and not not trying to think about tomorrow before we finish today. I was reading a, a plan in the Bible the other day and it was something about worrying about tomorrow robs today of its strength or robs today. Do you know what? Slow down, you crazy child. So ambitious for a juvenile. But then if you're so smart to tell me, why are you still so afraid? Oh. And the lyrics are, like, you, you know that when the truth is told that you can get what you want or you can just get old, you're going to kick out before you even went halfway through. Oh, when will you realise Vienna waits for you? Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow, it empties today of its strength. I mean... I actually looked to the side and something that's completely unrelated. I was actually gonna use this by Benefit, Cheeky Stowaways, this travel kit. Um, it was given to me at an event, a Tangle Teaser event that I went to this week. But um, what exactly am I gonna use in here? Like Benefit been canceled. Like, I don't even know why they wouldn't talk me and give me this. Like, let me finish what I'm talking about before I get onto the next one. While I don't think I'm like, a grown woman just yet like i'm really happy into the woman that i've turned out to be i think uh, my mom I, my mom prays for me and my sisters every single day and that's one of the biggest thing i've learned just pray for everyone in your life like for everything like that's literally pray for everything and do nothing you can't pray for something and then sit up at night and worry about it that's one thing that i've learned oh my god i'm gonna cry pray for everything and god is gonna make it happen in his timing not your timing remember that Second of all, you know, to go off of that palette, the reason why Tango Dealer probably thought they could get away with giving out that palette is because at the event, there was nothing but white girls there. And you know what, actually, all to your shade, all offence, in the words of the great philosopher Nicki Minaj, I, I need there to be more visibility for black girls at these beauty events. I feel like across the US and that kind of thing, YouTube Black has really helped to do that. Not so much here in the UK, so... That's a part of what I want to do in terms of the bigger picture, in terms of having visibility. I want to position myself and, you know, my idea, my my thing. I want to position myself to where I'll be in a position of power to be able to give other people's opportunities. And I want to be in such a high position of power so that little girls can also see, look, a black girl has done this and I can also do this as well. So if you are a black woman or man that is watching this you can do it as well no matter what the world is trying to do to stop you no matter what people come at you you know slavery for 400 years was our choice what, build your house build your dreams build your life you know have your success and your happiness built on a solid foundation guys i i want us to be the ceo of our own lives as well as the ceo of our own companies like we need to be the ceo the chief in command guest regret yeah was not hoeing out in my early 20s not, oh mate 
Oh, I'll never. I, I can't. I can't. I, I, Every holiday, I come on. I come back home. I cry. Yeah, it's, it's like, so depressing. What is this life? That is so depressing. <laughs> but the thing is, we live in England. We have to work. We have bills to pay. Every time I'm going to New York or coming back from New York, I never even finished my holidays. Telling you guys. So yeah, Marbella, Malaga, Venice, and then after that, I'll be going to um in September. I'll be going to New York, and next year I'll be going to South Korea. Whenever I go to New York or come back from New York, I always have a little cry. I can't even lie. In order for you guys to understand me as a person, like which I think I'm kind of giving you guys a bit more insight into this video, I think I kind of had to explain my connection to New York and that kind of thing. I'm like a very impressionable person and I'm an extrovert. So unfortunately, I need to... I'm an extrovert and I wouldn't say I'm an introvert at the same time. I would say I'm out and out an extrovert. I love talking to people. I love communicating with people. I love meeting new people and I love to share knowledge and kind of gain knowledge from people. I feed off other people's energy. I love being at parties and social gatherings because there's just so much energy. There's so much warmth kind of in the air. That's why New York is just such an incredible place to me. There's always something going on. Everybody is so hospitable. Like I've met some of the nicest people in New York and just had some of the most life-changing experiences in New York. For me, New York always represented fashion and I've always been interested in fashion and that kind of thing. Thing. so and for me i just like to be around people i like to feed on people's energy like i'm one of those like two heads are better than one you know kind of people my yearly trips to new york are like it's like the highlight of my whole life highlight of my whole year before i'm even done with the first trip i'm already booking the next one like i just love going there to eat the last time i went to new york i must have put on like five pounds and i was there for five days that's a pound a day like do you understand like for breakfast, I was eating, like, a stack of, like, four waffles. Then I'd eat lunch somewhere. And then I'd have a dinner, like, super late at night. Just because everything moves late and like that. Rarely do people eat dinner at, like, 8, 9, like, around the Times Square area, which is where I usually always stay. Like, at 10, 11, people are out shopping, eating, that kind of thing. You know, at least around the Times Square area. But my golf, I still want to put on more weight. Like, the thing about me is I have a big bottom, but I don't have big thighs and I don't have big boobs. I, you know, I, I can relate to having holiday blues. I cry when I'm on the plane going to New York. I cry when I'm on my way back. It's not even tears of, like, sadness, like, when I'm coming back home. It's more so I'm so happy that I got the opportunity to do that. I'm so happy that I got the opportunity to be in that moment. Like, I just love travelling. I love exploring. Doesn't everybody, you know, just wish you had more time to do it. But I'm really pushing. I just want to be independent. And I don't want to have a boss. I want to be the boss. You know, I want to own my own thing. I know at 23, like, it's really ambitious of me. And I think, what is life if you don't dream big? Like, T.I. was saying in the interview on Breakfast Club, he said something about he was ready to die, you know, something. I can't remember verbatim. I think you guys should watch the interview because it actually was really good. He said he's not ready to die, but at the end of the day, if you don't have anything that you'll die for, what's kind of the point of living? And I, and I really, you know, I do agree kind of with that. And for me, that feeling of exploring, of traveling, of helping people, of meeting people, of communicating, of just being around people and just having fun in life and enjoying it, that's what gives me momentum and that's what keeps me going. For lashes, I'm going to use some Doll Beauty lashes. I have been obsessed with these. I have such a big collection of these now. Oh my God. If you guys want to know my Doll Beauty favorites, oh my God. They're based out of the UK as well. They're on Instagram, Doll Beauty underscore underscore, I believe. The lashes are a tiny bit more pricey. Actually, they're not as pricey because I've got Lily lashes and they, yeah, they were pretty penny. This is in the style Selena or Selena. It just reminds me of like Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez for some reason, which I'm so happy that they're together. I think as a Justin Bieber fan, you'd think that I would hate that, but I'm just like, you know, everything happens for a reason. They had to kind of go apart to get back together at this time in their lives. I'm so happy. I love him so much. I love that Coachella, he was just like leading in praise and worship. I'm just like, I love you so much. I've got time for two J's in my life, Jesus and Justin. That's who I'm dedicated to. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus more so than Justin, but... I have a boyfriend of three years. Leave him, sis. I told by my friend that on Leave him. Out, it's not worth it. Leave him. I slept with her flatmate. Huh? But what? This was a couple of months ago now. My boyfriend is three years and I was recently told by my friend that on a night out, I slept with her flatmate. This was a couple of months ago now. She <laughs> brought it up with me. She worked out I had no memory of the event. She decided not to tell me until after the holiday. I'd got, after the holiday I'd got for my boyfriend for his birthday, Christmas, birthday straight Christmas present. Why? It's now post, can you cheat on someone you love? Mm. Can you cheat on someone and build a healthy no, relationship I don't believe. after? Surely I wanted to sleep with someone else. First of all, mommy, I'm getting a tattoo. <laughs> I want to get like a nice reminder of all, you know, my little, you know, no? 
If he says yes, will you let me get it? I know. If he says yes, will you let me get it? Guys, I do not like this green. And I really don't want to be boring and I want to try something different, but I really do not like this green. I feel like the colours were too warm. Because I did the, like, the green, I should have had, like, different colours to, like, offset it. Offset. Boo! Mama! So that was the end of the video, guys. If you have... No, that was not the end of the motherfucking video! <laughs> I really did not need this, but I just thought like, this is such a cute product to have. Like at the end of the day, I love Rihanna so much. And I just figured like, this is something that I'm gonna keep forever. And the thing is, I was watching so many reviews knowing that like I had this and I was like, oh my God, what if when I use mine, it's not gonna look as good. Like this is stunning. I feel like the body lover is just too sticky. It's just not what I need. I'm happy with that. I think that's really nice. That's really pretty. So guys, if you have enjoyed this, get ready with me. Give the video a like. Leave me a comment or anything. Let's get the discussion going. If you, you know, want to touch on anything I said in this video, if you have an opinion on any of the products I used, that kind of thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. Say bye to the people.